Welcome to Brave with Lisa YouTube channel. My name is Lisa Bruton and my goal is to inspire you to live bravely in that unique rhythm of grace that God has designed just for you. On this channel, we are going to be hearing from amazing people from all different walks of life who are bravely walking in that unique rhythm of grace and calling that God has designed just for them. I know that as we hear their stories, we are going to learn a lot. We're going to find keys that are going to help us to also walk bravely in that unique rhythm of grace and that unique calling that God has just for you and for me. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to Brave with Lisa. My name is Lisa Bruton and today I have my beautiful friend, Katie. Now, Katie is a woman of many uh, talents. She's kind of taking on the world, if you ask me. She's someone who says a big yes to God and just follows his lead. So I'm excited to hear more about your story and just what she's going to share with us today. So welcome, Katie. Thank you. Thank you. It's so nice to be with you and I feel really honoured that you asked me. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, Katie, I for those who don't know you, can you share a little bit about who you are, what you love to do, what you're passionate about, what's going on in your world? Oh, so many. It's a big question. It's a big question. Um, so I have three beautiful kids and a husband um, and we live on the Sunshine Coast. So we're originally from Hobart back in Tasmania and we've lived here for seven and a half years. So a bit of backstory um, for us is that we never really expected that we would move, but an opportunity arose um, for my husband to move here and so we just sort of that was kind of a first big yes I suppose in just going um, it was in a season where the kids were still really little so we just thought what have we got to lose let's just do it um, and really early on just started to see God make that transition really smooth and um, while I knew we were moving for Mark's work um, even then I just felt in my spirit that God was saying to me I have something for you here um, and so I just came into um, living here with a real open hand I didn't live here thinking we're going to go back to Hobart at some stage so um, don't kind of spread yourself out like I really embraced the move and just thought you know what if we're going to be here I'm going to be all in um, and so really threw myself into building relationships with people getting connected putting myself in really uncomfortable positions to meet people um, and so yeah that's kind of how we've ended up here and kind of where the story of what I'm doing now kind of began. And so Katie can you share about what you're doing now and the backstory to that? Yeah, so I am, um, well, the founder of Be That, but also the exec producer of the television show that we produce um, in partnership with the Australian Christian Network. So um, the heart for Be That is really around um, just people realising that we all know within ourselves who we want to be or who God's created us to be. Um, and it's more just about cultivating people to explore that and be that, be that person. Don't wait um, or not be intentional about how you can become that person. And so we really try through all the different things that we do to um, help people do that, to encourage and inspire people to do that and give them the practical tools and tangible skills that they need to be able to actually find that freedom. Yeah, and it's so powerful. I've seen your episodes, but it didn't start there, did it? It didn't start with the TV. How did it begin? Yeah. So kind of going back a little bit. Um, so before we moved to the Sunshine Coast, um, I had um, got involved with an organisation raising funds and bringing awareness around anti-human trafficking. So that was something that I was really, really passionate mm -hmm. about. Or it was more just like, this is what's in my hand right now. The kids were young, so I thought, I'm just going to put my, my hand to this and just see what God does with it. So I was um, finding auction items and sponsorships and running fundraising events to raise money for A21. And so I was involved with that back in Hobart and then moved to the sunny coast and thought, I'll just start running that event here. And so just the naivety, I just, I think that's the beauty in it sometimes. It's just like, you just, you just don't know what you're saying yes to, but I'm like, I'll just do it. But um, yeah, so I started running that event, but it started to become, or oh God just started really stirring in my heart um, 
more in the new people that I was meeting. I was meeting a lot of people in the community, mums from school, um, people outside of church. And God just started giving me a real heart for them. And it was at um, the very last fundraising event that I did for A21 um, with Be Hers. Um, was I was on the stage and I felt like God said to me, you're, you're fighting for this huge injustice and it's so needed, but these people aren't free themselves. And I looked out into the crowd and there was like 200 women there from um, mums from school and all these different walks from life. And he just started showing that so often we stay bound to the things that we face in life. We actually never overcome them. And so I just started thinking or just started stirring me that it's just like, once we can help them find freedom, we're so better positioned to be able to see the world outside of ourselves. And so often they become so consuming, but it's actually once we actually begin to be that person and see beyond, we can actually start serving those around us. So I was like, well, let's start there. <laughs> let's start with um, helping people find that freedom over things that they're facing in life. And then we're better positioned to fight all these big injustices that I'm like, <laughs> wanna want to fight. So that's kind of how it ended up. So God started to give you this heart and he kind of went, almost went backwards, not backwards, but um, more personal, more in your world mm. and wanting to impact those around you and giving you a heart to empower those to then empower others. And so yeah. you can see the snowball effect. Yeah. So he's given you this passion. So what did you do with it? How did you begin to walk that out? Because I think a lot of us have this passion. We start to get these aha moments as to what God's saying to our heart, but then it's like, now what do I do with it? Yeah, yeah. And I think it is just realising that like when God starts speaking to you about something or definitely for me when I started um, feeling this vision just take form in my heart, it's like it's just one step after another like I didn't so what I actually started doing after that moment was started running little community events um so just once a month we would put it out there to the community that we were going to host a um, gathering and we would introduce a particular topic we'd have a facilitator on the table um and then we would just have questions that would prompt these conversations just to get people sharing about their experiences and like often we looking for an expert or someone that can tell us how to fix a certain thing but what I was finding was that there was these women on the table and someone would share something that, that they've gone through and the woman next to them would be the one that would actually say I've been through something similar and um, just started to see these beautiful moments that as people started to share and bring things to the light there was that freedom and a lot of these women weren't Christians or anything like that and um, one of the things that I just love doing is just seeing Jesus all over their lives. Even if they can't see it, I just can go, I can see how God is got his hand on your life and how he has done things. And you might not have identified it yet, but I just found this space was a seed to just start developing relationships and loving on these women without any agenda. Um, but it just was a first step. And I never went into that community event envisaging that, only a few years later, we would have a global television show or anything like that. But it was just like faithfully just taking a step one after the other. But in all honesty, like some of those events, I'd have to pull over on the side of the road and I was physically sick because I was like so nervous that no one would come up, turn up. Or um, if Jesus wasn't talked about, I'd think, oh, what's the point? Like I'm not like they're not... Um, meeting him the way that I thought that he would but it's just like it just was all about just planting the seeds and just going you're just being obedient to what I'm asking and just don't stop um so yeah that's kind of when we where we started and there is something about what you just said there Katie in that so many times you know God will just give us this very simple task to do and I'm not saying what you did was simple yeah but there was simplicity to it mm -hmm. and we sometimes think it needs to be grand or complex in order for God to move and then if and then as we walk it out if he doesn't move as we think he's gonna move 
we're like, yeah. oh, did I get it wrong? <laughs> but it's just trusting him that he's mm. got the, he's running with that, like whatever we've planted with, like he said, that seed, yeah. uh, there's going to be fruit from it because we've been faithful and obedient and God is God. So he's going to meet those women and, yeah, you know. Really that, early you know. on, um, sorry, to, really no, early right. on, he said to me, um, when I was feeling discouraged or just thinking that it wasn't looking the way that I thought it was going to look um, and praying about it one day. And he said, it's not your job to save them. Like, it's not my job to save them. Just, this is just one part in their story and you don't know what journey they go on from this moment. And for me, B, that is more um, about bridging that gap between community and the church. And I don't mean the physical church, I mean us as the church and actually meeting people where they're at and not just waiting for them to come to us. And I, that was something that really was stirring on me and going, I'm within a church and I'm meeting all these people and I might invite them and they're not coming. So it's just like, how do I actually start to build relationship with them and just love on them without preaching at them? Yeah. But just be, be Jesus in their lives. And then you find that once they were going through certain things, they would ask questions or would prompt some type of conversation. So I found that so freeing once I felt like, oh, I don't need to have them have a moment where they're giving their lives to God, but he's got them and he's going to take them on that journey. But in this moment, I have an opportunity to just speak hope or encouragement or listen um, and he'll do the rest. And so yeah. everything that's followed is just me trusting that and going, I might not see it all right now, but just in this moment, I'm just being obedient to what I feel like he's asking me to do. And the fruit of that is his, his to bear, not mine, if that makes any sense. Beautiful. Absolutely. I couldn't have said it better myself. And I love how you, well, that brings such a, a lighter um, way of carrying it too, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Knowing that it's God's responsibility <laughs> to meet with the women. It's not yours. You just do yeah. as he leads you. Mm -hmm. So Katie, I'm going to like, jump ahead a bit in the you know mm. from there to now you're running you know you're producing tv mm. series and um can you share the in between <laughs> like what yeah. happened so it, it was I still remember the day I was walking to the coffee shop with my husband and the kids um and I just this little thought like it was a god drop but it was just like create a youtube show where you actually bring some women together and you talk about the topics that you're talking about at the gatherings um and then by people watching it we can encourage other people to start having these conversations we'll resource them with some of the questions and so that was the thought and then i rang um uh one of the girls on the team and i said hey what do you think about this idea and she was like love it so just instantly spoke it out spoke it to Mark as we were going to the coffee shop and left it. And then it was only a couple of weeks um, just um, through connections that I'd made here on the Sunshine Coast. The Australian Christian Channel are actually based here. Um, one of the team is on the board of A21, so I knew him through the work that I'd done with Be Herds. Um, and they got wind of this idea. And so they actually rang me and said, hey, we heard you've got this idea. Um, can you come in and tell us about it? And I just was <laughs> like, so the next day, so this is probably only a couple of weeks after that original thought, I'm pitching for a television show, but I didn't even have a television show. It was kind of like, I've just got this idea. Um, and then it was kind of like, I think I waited three months because they had to take it to their board and all these different things. And I... I just was like, it won't happen, like as if that's going to happen. But it's funny how it's just like you, in your mind you're like, it can't happen, but there's just this faith of like I've already seen you do things so it wouldn't surprise me if this is <laughs> And so um, they sent me an email and I remember just like opening it up and them saying, yeah, we're happy to film some pilot episodes. Um, and so we did, we put these pilot episodes together and like anything that evolves, like I look back and go, how the heck did we pull that off? <laughs> and how the heck was it enough for them to go, let's film a season and then another season. Um, and just to see how far the quality of the program 
has grown um, and that we had to go through that journey of like um, sifting and seeing what worked and the, the awkwardness of looking back and going, I can't believe we did that. Um, but just the graciousness of God to kind of let us go on that journey at a pace that then got the show to a, to a standard that I felt finally like, okay, the, the world can see this now and I'm really proud of what we've done and just allow God to do that. That is so incredible, Katie. I would love to know kind of, because from what I understand, you didn't have any experience in television and production yeah no <laughs> so I say I don't that much <laughs> <laughs> tell me about your headspace mm. and even some hurdles you might have had to get over because mm. we know that you know when God calls us to do something we don't necessarily have to be qualified because he mm. qualifies us right yeah. but can you share yeah just I guess the journey of that mm. space yeah, well, it's kind of interesting. So my very first job, well, proper job, I would say, was at, um, com in commercial radio. Oh. So I was account managing. So I would sell all the radio advertising. And then on the back end of me, before, just before I started having kids, we brought a television network. And so I started selling television advertising as well. <clears throat> and I still remember the first meeting with the Australian Christian Channel and... I instantly could comprehend the process. Like even though I hadn't produced or anything like that, it just, I knew the world. Like I knew the way that um, the structure of the shows, how they get produced and um, from an advertising perspective. And so it was just this like amazing moment of like back then, I had no idea that God was equipping me with the skills that gave me enough to sit in a meeting and hold my own in front of people to be like, I know what you're talking about. I might not know how to produce, but I knew the language. And so just again, that back then I had no idea that God would take that experience and shape it and then use it for what he was actually calling me into. Um, and I... I all along have been and been very transparent that I don't have a lot of a lot of skills, but I do have a skill of um, seeing in other people the gifts and talents on their lives and recognizing what I am needing to help it move forward. And so I, um, yeah, just started having conversations with people around what their skill sets were and bringing them in that kind of um, built this team around me that has empowered me to step into what I need to do from a production level. Um, but it definitely has come, like, I don't want to make it sound like it's been really smooth sailing. Like, I think all along the journey, it's been just continually that sense of um, the enemy trying to come in and say, you're not qualified to do this. Um, and it's really important for me to create a program that can stand against secular audiences. Like I don't feel like, um, and there is a bit of a mindset and around Christian media that it's not as good as what the secular world can produce. Whereas I really want to break that mindset. And for me personally, I was like, I do believe be that can stand up against and will reach a place that, will reach millions of people because it's God's and he he will bring its best and so um more around the journey of going it's not there yet and so watching it and going what's the time frame to keep producing a show that can get to that standard and that's probably where the insecurities come in because you look at what other people are doing and you're comparing and going oh but it's not quite as good as that but just continually surrendering it and going at the right time it'll continue to become what it needs to be yeah yeah and that that you've hit on something there too hey that can be such a joy robber and joy stealer is like yeah. when we start to compare and go well they're doing it better mm. but actually what you carry and and the the what you're producing is really anointed mm. and um, heaven breathed. So I have no doubt that it's going to get to wherever you can picture and beyond. Yeah. Um, can you t give us a few, is there some moments of this 
you know, stepping out into the, it's, and it was a big step, Katie. Yeah. Can you share some awesome moments with us? Oh, I mean, looking back, just, just to even get the opportunity to create the show, like I just still remember just, um, just crying and just being like so overwhelmed with the kindness of God that all along for the big moments, I'll share a bit more, is when they come, it's just a knowing that in and of myself, I did nothing to make it happen. Like those significant moments have just been like, I've been faithful to like show up and steward it, but in and of, in and of myself, there is no way I could have made this happen. And so the show was one of them, obviously. And then just to see like the team that he brings together and just going, oh, they're not showing up for me. They're showing up because they believe in the vision and they also have got a God call on their lives. And so for me to just um, encourage that and nurture that and bring out their best. Um, but another moment was in the lead up to season four, um, I just had started to get a real strength. I wanted a new set. I know it's like, I wanted a new set because like we were talking about before, having a program that can um, be seen amongst all the things that are produced these days and just go, this is a quality program. And I felt like I needed a set that honoured the stories that we were sharing and it was really beautiful. And so we were only a few weeks out from filming and I was just like, I really feel like we need a new set. And so we were in a production meeting and one of the team said, there's actually a couple, uh, no, sorry, a girl and a mum that are in interior design and they actually used to um, build all the sets for Hillsong like colour conference and all those different things I was like I'll reach out to them and see if they are interested and so um, we had tried to call each other and missed a couple of calls but in the background I was also trying to get the funds to be able to build a new set because I'm like well the furniture everything that we need to be able to do it um, and so I have really struggled with that part because I to just it's funny that I've got a sales background and could always ask for money when it came to advertising but when it comes to be that I think I um I hold back a little bit because I think it's me asking and I don't want to put anybody out but I forget that it's like actually God's vision and people are going to want to come alongside to continue to see it move forward um, and so anyway I had a couple of conversations with people and I awkwardly had met this um, guy who's really well off in business and so I reached out to him I said hey I just really feel like God wants to build a new set for be that would you be open to like helping and he said send me some information through I put a bit of a proposal together and I sent it through and um the day that I had to ring him to actually ask <clears throat> if he would do it, I just got on my knees and I was praying and I just, I'd been really stressed about it and worried about it. But then I just had this moment, I got on my knees and the Holy Spirit said to me, he's going to say yes. And the minute he says yes, the ladies who are going to build the set are going to call. And so, and again, when you're like, in that moment you kind of you hear it but then you're like is it my thing yeah. I don't know <laughs> and so I rang him and I'm like really nervous and shaking and he's just like yep I'll do it how much do you need and I went oh I actually don't know do you mind if I just like find out and then get back to you and then I literally hung up the phone and my phone starts ringing and it's the girl's to build the set and we tried to call each other heaps of times and they said yep we're available um and this is how much it's going to cost and, wow. I, <laughs> and then I was like and he literally he gifted the money to the exact amount to build the set and it all got done and again just that moment of just like overwhelming like goodness and kindness of God and all I could do was weep like cry because I was just like it's in those moments so often you like strive and you do it in your own strength and you carry this weight and burden and then you just have a moment like that and you go, oh, I want to do it that way. I like, I want to live it that way and why do I constantly fall back into this? It's just such a constant wrestle of like, but he just always brings you back. 
And I just think like he's just shown me that I will stumble, I will fall, I will make mistakes along the way, but he's bigger than that. And in a moment where it's just I'm reminded that it's so much bigger than me that um, I just, it just blows me away. Sorry, that was a really long story. That was that was beautiful. And I love too how it was just before the, a new season. And it's also, also, it would have been so many layers to what happens in mm-hmm. the new set because it would be like, this is confirmation that God's in this. This is yeah. like, you know, it would restoke the fire of passion yeah. for it as well. Absolutely. And just like I said, for me, within the show like the most important part like obviously the team and putting together the episode but it's like honoring a guest story like honoring what someone has gone through and going as an executive producer the most important job I have is to safeguard them Mm -hmm. and protect them and make sure that we share their story in a way that they can look back on it and know that it wasn't all for nothing like and that God has shaped them and used them and now they know that their story is gonna inspire and help other people and that they can see Jesus in it like so to have a set that they can walk into and just know that God built that set Mm. and like we as a team we got in there like we got I got a team together like it's just so many parts of it that it's just like as you would know like no one can take that those moments away like and that they're just a constant reminder of like his faithfulness and that even when things are really hard um that he is in it and he's not going to leave you here like there's going to be more yeah oh Katie I have loved all that you have shared there is so much gold in it and I think that um I think we can all find ourselves in part of your story as well and we're like (laughs) but really really can Katie for those who want to uh, find out more about be that and or even just connect with you where can they go to find you where can they go to find more information yeah well I would just encourage like the website we could be that.co um, so we have the show but we also have resources available um, gift boxes a mentorship program we're just about to start just for women that obviously just want to cultivate um that spirit within them and just believe that there is more that they can put their hands to from a community sense um but obviously you can find me on instagram i guess at mrs katie thompson um yeah so i would love to connect with anybody or without be that instagram as well um so reach out happy to answer any questions or just um yeah if anybody does have a little stirring and they want to explore that um then i'm definitely happy to help yeah, and you're so you're really available, and um, you provide just this beautiful space for people too. So, I know whether they come to you for mentoring or um, or they follow you on Instagram, it's going to bless them. So, really nice. Well, thank you for having me, and um, yeah, just really want to encourage you doing such a great thing, and obviously just that same heart for sharing stories. And so, I'm normally behind the camera, so I appreciate you. <laughs> opportunity to like share a little bit more about it oh thank you Katie love you dearly thanks Lisa thanks for joining me on brave with Lisa I hope that it has inspired or impacted you in a small or large way feel free to comment to subscribe and share with some friends and please join us next week on another conversation we will have here on this channel on brave with Lisa